Hello, my name is Joshua Tyler, and today I'm going to be going over how to disassemble this EK pump. This is a EK, let's see, SPC Express. Um, this came in a kit, a water cooling kit. Um, I think the PE version, it had a 360 radiator in here. And the thing is, I'm not only into computing from a compute standpoint, but I'm on, into computing uh, from a physical standpoint too. So I've been building PCs since I was 15. Uh, got into water cooling, I had a pump die on, die on me, and I wanted to check the insides, and it looks like there's no screws. F finally figured out how to disassemble it. Uh, you will need um, these useful. I have an iFixit toolkit. Uh, this is a big one. I think this is 2.5 hex that I've got here on here. Um, I use the big one because I have big hands, and using the power tools, uh, you need to use some power to screw this in back. Okay, so here is the pump at the bottom, and then you have the reservoir at the top. So to disassemble the reservoir, you can simply unscrew the top here. You can, uh, there is a gasket in here that you wanna make sure uh, that stays there. So if you want to have your, um, in the case, if you have your pump reservoir combo laying on its side, if that gasket is not there and sealed properly, you will spill water into your computer. Um, I have not learned that lesson, but I'm sure someone has, um, and wise men learn from other mis others mistakes. Um, here's the reservoir, you can unscrew that too. Uh, you can also swap that out for a larger reservoir if you want to. Um, that helps reduce the thermal, uh, increase the thermal capacity of the water so it takes longer for the water to cool up under load. Um, this here, this comes right up. That is uh, that prevents a vortex from happening in the uh, in the reservoir when you're pumping water through, so you don't get air bled back into your loop. Um, air typically you typically want air to sit at the top of your reservoir, so then it's not affecting anything in the loop. There's another gasket in here. Uh, that gasket is also important because you don't want water leaking out from um, at the bottom of the reservoir. So here um, you can see there's no screw access to the pump, um, so I'll show you how to do that. Um, also, don't bother with taking this. This is a glorified sticker and there's no screw behind here. Uh, so first what you want to do is unscrew uh, these rubber feet off the bottom and these are anti, uh, these help reduce vibrations so you don't have the pump rattling in your system. And I'm not mad at EK for doing this, because this is a beginner DIY water cooling loop, they don't want people just going in and unscrewing things and not being able to do, uh, not being able to put it back together or putting it back together wrong and then uh, really screwing something up. Um, so I don't harsh them for this, um, but like me, uh, I've had it for a couple of years, it died, I wanna open it up and see if, um, see if I can revive it. So, um, and I never saw anything about this online, so I wanna put this out here. So what uh, these unscrew, so what you wanna do is just grip these with the pliers. I don't like to grip them with the pliers for too long because the pliers will chew onto the metal and I don't like chewed metal. fingers as soon as I can because I like my metal untouched and pristine. Well, it's a dead thing. It's a dead pump anyways. Who, who the hell cares? And this was somewhat of a poor design on EK's part. So I'll show you what I mean once I get this last leg off. 
see I'm in the kitchen set because LTT was successful with it. Uh, so why not try it myself? So this here, this plate comes off, but you see here, um, there's an entry point to the electronics for the pump. So the power comes in here. The issue with this is this is not visible from the front. So if there is a leak out of the back of the reservoir down here, water hugs, that's why you have gutters on your house, water hugs and will come in to here. Now, under this, this plate has somewhat of a, um, a little bit of room where you can have a little bit of a leak before it gets to the electronics, but not much. So if you have a slow leak that you do not see happening in the back of your pump, then it will kill your pump, which is exactly what happened here. Uh, so shame on you, EK, for that terrible design. Uh, now we can see the bottom. We have essentially, so this is not stuck in by any screw. So if you feel this get some resistance when you try to pull it out, that is not a screw, that is electromagnetism. So if there is an electromagnetic field, is sticking this in here so you can just simply just pull that out there you go and you can hear there's a magnet in there so the reason is you don't want water anywhere near the electronics okay um, so this is completely sealed off and via electromagnetic electromagnetic induction this coil produces um, I guess that's a three phase so positive positive negative a B uh, or positive negative A, positive negative B, positive negative C, so a three-phase electromagnetic field um, that spins this pump around and gets the water through. Um, so you use the electromagnetic field to wirelessly move the thing so you don't have any water anywhere here. And you can hear that magnet in there. See, this circuit is dead because this didn't hold enough water because this, and I'll put it back in, See that here. Yep, so it's there. This thing should have been on the bottom. There are feet. If this was on the bottom in the middle, there wouldn't have been, um, there's not a way for water to build up. There's automatic, um, like, and you see it on the roads, like right beside a, um, like on, if you see a road or you're walking on the sidewalk, the road goes down. Um, where there is um, the grate or whatever, not the grate. Well, anyway, when, when there's a drainage hole, the road actually does tilt in towards that. So if EK, if you designed it to where it tilts in towards the bottom, but also has this wire coming out of it, one, you wouldn't have water coming in. Two, if you did have water coming in, it would have escaped and evacuated automatically without building up ruining a $100 pump. Okay, so now let's reassemble it. The reason I wanted the iFix toolkit. So if you want to set this up right, okay, so there's a hole here. Um, you want the wire there. Make sure that's in there. All the way, it should click around so you can, you should Feel that magnet really pull that in there. So what is wrong? There we go. There we go. And we'll put that back on there like that. And I'll show you why I wanted the iFix toolkit. So here's that screw. Here's that screw. Okay, so this is a screw that comes in with the kit. So if you have the pump, you already have this. So it's a lot easier to screw it back in. You go ahead use this to give, give the screwdriver something to hold on to. It's a really poor design and it's a shame because these pumps are so darn expensive. It's looking at replacing it, it's like $150 for one from EK 
but I don't trust the $50 ones that are off brand, so what am I gonna do? Well, UK, I gave you a free design, so maybe uh, throw me a bone there. I am a poor college student. Not the poorest, but you grew a college student. It's a shame because my major requires a large amount of computational capacity. Right now, computational capacity is uh, not doing that well. So, will it be NVIDIA, AMD, or Intel that saves us? Maybe ARM. No, Apple's still selling computers. It's a shame that Apple doesn't do, doesn't allow users to use, do actual large deep uh, deep learning networks. If Apple made Apple let their neural engine have access to 32, 64 gigabytes of RAM per card, everybody would be in trouble. I heard it's pretty good. Apple is very good at designing things for their customer base. So if they want professional, um, I want to say professional scientists, but really it's for those uh, coffee shop hipsters. It is really a shame because they do such a good job of doing what they do, except for right to repair. You know, Apple ecosystem is really good for uh, their customer base, so slot that right back in there. So let's take a look at that. Slot that in. Boom. Now, if you want to do something useful, maybe advantageous, take this off. Just drill a hole. Drill a hole so it can escape. Just make sure that nothing under it is important. Now, what you may want to do, like get a sponge and put it under there. Um, the sponge should absorb some water. So, uh, it's a really poor design because there's no way for the water to evacuate without damaging components. So drill an evacuation hole and then put a sponge under there and then just check it. Um, if it's a slow leak, that sponge should be damp and you should be able to notice it and fix your components. But this is, um, it's too expensive of a um, component to replace um, to not have proper, uh, proper safety. So DK, uh, not shame on you for making this hard to open, but shame on you for not having um, uh, not having better safety on such an expensive component.